Okay. Um, so, uh, hello, uh, welcome uh, uh, to this educational um, from the New York Young Communist League. Um, we are presenting tonight. My name is Turner Roth, um, um, member of the YCL and of the New York Communist Party. Um, we present uh, works every two weeks. Um, and today, tonight, we are um, looking at um, uh, two works. Um, Lenin's The Task of the Russian Social Democrats um, and Henry Winston's From Anti-Slavery to the Anti-Monopoly Strategy. Um, so let's uh, dig in. So um, this pamphlet, uh, The Task of the Russian Social Democrats, um, written by Lenin in exile in uh, Serbia at the close of 1897. Um, it was first published in 1898, um, written in exile, um, the close of 1897, first published in 1898 by the Emancipation of uh, Labor Group in Geneva. Um, so, purpose of the pamphlet is um, to compare and contrast the three principal groups active uh, in Russia at the end of the 19th century. Um, so, Narodnya Volia, a people's will, um, a, a group founded in 1879, um, it's a populist movement uh, organized around political liberation um, from Tsarism. Um, uh, pursued political change mainly uh, through revolutionary terrorism, um, um, went underground, um, heavily persecuted uh, by the Tsar. Um, so this is one kind of strand, um, uh, one kind of principal group at the time that Len um, is, is uh, responding to. Um, the other, Narodnya Pravo, People's Right, uh, founded 1893, um, which was a split from uh, People's Will, um, based on kind of broader idea of, of, of change through, uh, through, through political agitation um, in a kind of expanded sense. Um, um, not solely focused on uh, more kind of subversive uh, terrorist approaches, um, but was a split that kind of um, envisaged uh, a larger uh, form um, of political agitation. Um, and then the third group, um, which uh, Lenin belonged to and which uh, he is um, arguing from the position of, arguing for, um, criticizing the other groups from um, the Ajo Bodzdenye Trula, the Emancipation of Labor, um, founded 1883 by Georgi Plekhanov, uh, first explicitly Marxist group um, in, in Russia. Um, and it, it would eventually merge um, into the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party um, in 1903. Um, but so, so it's the emancipation um, of labor group uh, uh, that was the first to, to put forward um, the ideas of social democracy and uh, also known as uh, the, the Social Democrats. Um, and of course, Social Democrat today um, is, you know, uh, has a kind of different connotation, a uh, different, um, you know, of course, uh, 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 the history uh, after this period kind of developed a different um, uh, understanding of what uh, social democracy means. Uh, um, but at this time, the social democrats, you know, um, were the main uh, Marxist um, revolutionary group. Um, and so between these three, uh, the task or this pamphlet is to elucidate um, uh, not just the theoretical positions, um, but practically what um, those theoretical positions entail and what they actually look like, uh, the significance 
the significance of them. So the question is, again, uh, in what do the practical tasks of the social democrats uh, consist? Um, and uh, throughout this pamphlet, we will see that the task is to explicate um, and show how the political and economic struggles, the terrain are uh, interwoven in the approach of the social democrats in a way that the other two uh, uh, groups um, uh, do not uh, have developed or not are not uh, intertwined. Um, so um, so um, so says, uh, from the very moment they appeared as a separate social revolutionary trend, the Russian social democrats have always quite definitely indicated this object of their activities, have always emphasized the dual manifestation and content of the class struggle of the proletariat, and have always insisted on the inseparable connection between their socialist and democratic tasks. The connection clearly expressed in the name uh, they, have, they have adopted. Um, so, the dual aspect of the struggle, both socialism uh, and uh, democracy. Um, 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 so uh, in what then does this uh, consist? Um, so on the socialist and um, uh, both education, agitation and organization, um, Lenin will kind of group um, the basic kind of um, approaches under. Um, so spreading of propaganda, um, uh, educating of workers at uh, a point of production, um, um, uh, bringing uh, into clear relief, um, which at the time was uh, not, um, which is still in its very early, of course, development. Um, uh, Marxist, uh, at least in terms of a, 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 its its um, 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 its um, uh, the the working classes still had not yet uh, to to kind of um, uh, take in or or have a lot of the these these ideas um, kind of brought uh, to a kind of mass understanding. So so part of uh, the task the socialist of uh, the socialist socialist struggle is really um, in this early period, late 19th century, to still kind of bring to bear uh, and to make an object of mass comprehension what uh, the theoretical kind of armature of Marxism uh, means. Um, and uh, so, so to, uh, to really explicate the kind of interrelations of the classes uh, and the struggle between them and the necessary points of conflict um, uh, is one aspect of the struggle through through education. Um, agitation um, is uh, has to do with taking part in the manifest the, the spontaneous manifestations of struggle, um, pushing forward the existing um, uh, struggles um, uh, over primarily working day, wages, working conditions. Um, so, uh, um, so the social democrats, um, um, you know, uh, uh, being uh, there um, with, with the workers, not only uh, to educate, but to, um, but to be practically um, um, involved um, as the working class, uh, uh, um, pushing, for, um, you know, agitating um, uh, um, around the, the conditions that the workers face, um, and, and organization. Um, uh, they were, you know, uh, creating these circles on the workers, establishing contact between them and themselves, the the, the workers and the social democrats, um, uh, and uh, organizing uh, to train, you know, um, uh, a body you know, um, of, of those uh, uh, who can um, um, expand the terrain of struggle, um, expand education and um, uh, push forward, um, push forward the struggle. Um, so the work of the social democrats 
um, is mainly directed at the urban uh, industrial proletariat. Um, uh, yet, uh, Lenin says that you know uh, the handicraft and rural laborers are not ignored in this. So, so uh, at this time, um, a lot of this work um, is mainly directed at the um, the urban industrial pro proletariat. Um, um uh, uh, uh as they are um um from the most advanced politically um um uh, uh and they have the largest of course numbers concentration um um uh, and kind of form the largest kind of political center of 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 activity and of organizing um um, so, um, so yeah, so, uh, and, um, it says that the dissemination of socialism and the idea of the class struggle among the urban workers will inevitably cause these ideas to flow in the smaller and more scattered channels. Um, this requires that these ideas take deeper root among the better prepared elements and spread throughout the vanguard of the Russian working class movement uh, 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 and of the Russian revolution. Um, so there is, you know, at this point, um, you know, an idea of the industrial proletariat as being um, uh, the most uh, advanced and the most uh, in, in the best position um, to expand uh, the ideas um, uh, of Marxism and that kind of seeing the countryside um, and the rural workers and, and the smaller crafts as um, as uh, you know, being uh, as being, you know, eventually influenced by these by these ideas, um, by the by the you know um, the capacity um, uh, created among the uh, industrial proletariat. So the political struggle um, is the other end. So again, uh, Lenin looks at this in terms of education, agitation, and uh, uh, organization. So um, so along with the spreading. Of the education around um, the economic forms of society, there is at the same time um, a spreading of the democratic idea of democratic ideas among the masses. Uh, um, uh, the ideas of the necessity of overthrowing the autocratic system and a kind of propagation of ideas of what democratization um, of the political system uh, uh, would would mean for the workers, right? Um, and so. This is basically, you know, uh, one of the critiques um, uh, uh, leveled by the the other two uh, uh, groups um, that uh, the social democrats didn't have uh, a very much advanced or or they 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 put to the side uh, questions of political struggle um, uh, in favor of of of, of uh, 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 agitating agitating etc. around simply um, economic issues, um, but so um, you know, the purpose of this pamphlet is to kind of refute that idea and to show uh, the various kind of um, uh, to, to kind of state what the what the practical um, um, activities um, uh, looked like um, and how the interrelation of political and um, and economic struggles are. Uh, intertwined. Um, so again, um, you know, uh, the agitational element, of course, you know, um, uh, uh, agitating against police tyranny, um, against, you know, various political restrictions uh, that workers, you know, suffered every day um, against the bureaucrats and representatives of, of, of absolutism. Um, um, and then, of course, um, you know, creating organizational structures of the workers um, to to um, to bring about these changes, um, uh, creation of working class uh, leadership um, in driving through um, these changes, um, uh, um, really um, what Lenin wants to say is that the working class um, um, can be the only one that uh, of all the various groups, um, and there were, of course, 
uh, you know, various kinds of groups, strata, um, even different, um, you know, uh, classes or parts of parts of classes, non-proletariat non that were, you know, um, opposed to Tsarism and opposed to absolutism and, and, and the autocracy of, uh, of, 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 the, of the Tsarist regime. Um, so um, Lenin is uh, wanting to say, uh, wanting to show that um, that uh, the working class um, uh, suffers the most of all these groups and that uh, only uh, the working class, the proletariat, and again, thinking uh, uh, a lot of this work is being done primarily at this time among the industrial proletariat, um, that they uh, form um, the most advanced and most uh, kind of resolute and, and the, the, um, the kind of privilege point of being able to lead uh, um, a change not only in the economic system, but in uh, the political system. Um, um, so, Lennon writes, just as there is no issue affecting um, the life of the workers in the economic field that must be left unused for the purpose of economic agitation. So there is no issue in the political field that does not serve as a subject for political agitation. Uh, these two kinds of agitation are inseparably connected in the activities of the social democrats as the two sides of the same metal. Um, and so, um, so, um, so the question is, um, you know, um, how to uh, uh, how to go about uh, in this process. How what is what does uh, unity uh, look like? Um, 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 the question then kind of becomes um, uh, regarding the political dimension, and it's mainly the kind of political dimension. Um, that is that is being focused on. Um, uh, should the social democrats join forces with those strata and classes mutually opposed to the common enemy, uh, the Russian autocracy? Uh, the answer that he gives is affirmative. Um, however, uh, with the qualification that this alliance is temporary and concedes nothing of principle to those forces mutually opposed to the common enemy. Um, uh, so, as he says here, you know, uh, the social democrats support the progressive social classes against the reactionary classes, the bourgeoisie against the representatives of privilege, land owning, estate, and bureaucracy, the big bourgeoisie against the reactionary strivings of the petty bourgeoisie. Uh, the support does not presuppose nor does it call for any compromise with non social democratic programs and principles. It is support given to an ally against a particular enemy. Moreover, the Social Democrats rendered the support in order to exploit the fall of the common enemy, um, but expects nothing for themselves from these temporary allies and concedes nothing to them. Um, um, so, okay, so, um, um, so this question of unity is posed and the question of compromise um, is shown, uh, you know, to be not, um, you know, compromise, compromise um, uh, not in principle, but compromise in terms of the achieving um, of an immediate or, you know, in a kind of intermediate uh, object of struggle. Um, so, um, um, you know, how to, uh, um, best form the largest um, unity of forces, uh, even those which are conflicting in certain respects, so as to um, so as to uh, uh, be able to um, take down, to be able to um, to to be victorious against uh, the common enemy. So. Um, um, so. Uh, uh, 
Lenin says further, in the fight against the autocracy, the working class must single itself out, for it is the only thoroughly consistent and unreserved enemy of the autocracy. Only between the working class and the autocracy is no compromise possible. Only in the working class can democracy find a champion who makes no reservations, is not irresolute and does not look back. Um, the hostility of all other classes, groups and strata of the population towards the autocracy is not unqualified. Their democracy always looks back. The bourgeoisie cannot but realize that industrial and social development is being retarded by the autocracy, but it fears the complete democratization of the political and social system and can at any moment enter into alliance with the autocracy against the proletariat. Uh, the petty bourgeoisie is two-faced by its very nature, and while it while it gravitates on the one hand towards the proletariat and democracy, on the other it gravitates towards the reactionary classes, tries to hold up the march of history and is apt to be seduced by the experiments and blandishments uh, of the autocracy. Um, so um, say, you know, that in forming an alliance in the pursuit of common political ends, the working class must not merge with the other classes in strata. Um, it must not accept compromise and doling um, of its revolutionary activity, but must stand out as the leader of this struggle, the vanguard element in the struggle uh, for democracy. Um, you know, so in this way, the other elements engaged in the common struggle will be pushed to more radical ends, uh, will be pushed to affirm the leadership um, of, of the working class. Um, um, so, uh, so, you know, so yes, so it is uh, a matter of unity, yes, you know, um, um, you know, the creating, uh, you know, uh, in language uh, that we use, uh, that is used later and we still use today, the, the, the creating of a united front of struggle. Um, but the question uh, is, um, uh, you know, not of simply um, uh, uh, diminishing um, or uh, uh, um, forsaking, you know, um, the, the kind of the radical element um, uh, that the working class brings, um, but um, of um, using the inherent radicality uh, based on its um, based on its position, you know, in the relation of, of um, in the relation uh, between the classes as, as, um, as being, you know, uh, the most exploited and, um, 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 uh, and the one that has really the most to gain um, to be, um, um, to find those, those aspects uh, that can be united with uh, so as to um, push forward um, uh, um, uh, certain advances, you know, um, that will render the long term, the final aim, uh, the, 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 the most emancipatory ends, you know, which um, are, you know, still distant. Um, but it's a question kind of, you can say, of how, um, you know, how unity, how united front um, is that movement towards what is still kind of distant and um, not realizable, you know, at this particular juncture or at, at, at a particular juncture. Um, so there always, I guess you could say, uh, needs to be um, an analysis um, of, um, of, 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 what, um, of, what a of what a proper compromise looks like, what, what, kind of, um, what kind of compromise or what kind of, um, you know, um, alliances um, you know, um, even if only short term, are ones that move things forward, um, that create, uh, in general, better conditions for a struggle to getting to um, that which still remains kind of, you know, distant, um, and uh, to not uh, to not be kind of um, 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 to to and to be sure, kind of in that. Um, in that alliance or in that unity, that um, the, um, the kind of privileged position and a certain way of uh, the working class is not um, kind of forsaken to uh, other forces, which are not uh, as 
you know, as progressive, as kind of far reaching, as revolutionary, right? Um, so I think, you know, Lenin is really kind of um, posing here um, uh, certain problems, you know, um, uh, posing the kind of, in many ways, um, kind of problematic, you could say, of unity, of uniting, of, um, of the United Front. Um, um, so, um, uh, so I mean, so yeah, so he's, um, you know, um, kind of warning against uh, those kinds of compromises that would weaken, um, that would weaken the overall struggle. He says, you know, the merging of the democratic activities of the working class with the democratic aspirations of other classes and groups would weaken the democratic movement, would weaken the political struggle, would make it less determined, less consistent, more likely to compromise. On the other hand, if the working class stands out as the vanguard fighter for democratic institutions, uh, this will uh, this will strengthen the democratic movement. Will strengthen the struggle for political liberty because the working class will spur on all the other democratic and political opposition elements. Will push the liberals towards the political radicals. Will push the radicals towards an irrevocable rupture with the whole of the political and social structure of present society. We said above uh, that all socialists in Russia should become social democrats. We now add all true and consistent democrats in Russia should become social democrats, uh, right? So I think, you know, um, um, uh, it, 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 posing, it's really posing here um, um, uh, the question of, of how uh, alliances can be formed where the kind of spur, you know, of revolutionary working class activity is not dulled, but, uh, you know, in fact, radicalizes the rest of the maybe less radical elements that are being uh, entered into alliance with, um, you know, which is uh, a question that we still have today when considering uh, our, um, our, our need for unity, um, that how uh, uh, do we push things forward in such a way uh, that uh, 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 position is not simply that of uh, compromising or following, uh, tailing as you know, as some say, uh, other forces, but of really standing out um, uh, in, um, in those who we enter into unity with because uh, we necessarily have to enter into unity with uh, uh, broader uh, forces outside of us. How how is it uh, uh, that um, that that radicality is able to be maintained and to act as the spur um, uh, uh, to uh, not only lead that struggle forward and to and to achieve you know uh, the aims that open up greater possibility for further revolutionary activity and to achieve, you know, eventually socialism, you know, which is still on the horizon. Um, uh, but, you know, how in that movement um, can it be created such that the other uh, elements uh, that are entered into alliance with don't have the upper hand, but are necessarily pushed to become more radical uh, themselves. So I think, you know, that's, that's, um, um, uh, a question that we, we absolutely still have. So in essence, the confusion concerning um, the practical activity of the Russian social democrats shared by the uh, Nar uh, Narodo Volsti and the uh, Narodo Pravsti groups, the two other groups here, um, has to do uh, with the way that the social democrats understand the unity of political and economic demands. Um, the political problems are not um, um, uh, the political problems are not abstracted and isolated from the economic ones, such that uh, in fighting for one, the social democrats are at the same time fighting for the other. Um, this leads to the confusion that political problems take a back seat uh, or are subsumable to economic ones. Whereas Lenin argues that the unity of the demands and their practical deployment um, 
evinces the concrete and historically specific understanding of the conditions in Russia at the time. Um, in other words, only the social democrats are able to further both the economic and political demands of the proletariat because they understand that the strengthening of the economic struggle uh, will create, uh, because they understand that the strength and the political struggle will create um, the power needed to lead. Uh, 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 well, uh, sorry, would they understand that the strength and the economic struggle will create the power needed to lead the political struggle, which will only, which only the proletariat uh, is able to do unequivocally and without uh, looking back. Um, um, so, so yeah, so that um, uh, that forms, I think, kind of the general uh, outline um, of this of this pamphlet. Um, um, really, just posing um, the uh, essentially the, the the dialectical interconnection of uh, of political and economic struggle, um, and of the need for unity um, with. Other aspects, whether other groups, uh, 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 classes, um, um, you know, in in creating, um, uh, you know, of course, at this time it was to to depose uh, 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 the czar to to and to open up, um, you know, um, a um, uh, to open up, um, you know, a space of of of, of democracy that. You know, uh, didn't exist. Uh, um, you know, of course, conditions uh, uh, today uh, a bit different. But I think a lot of um, the kind of basic kind of ideas that Lenin is working with um, here um, inform um, you know subsequent theorizing around uh, you know uh, United Front um, and um, you know the basic kind of problems surrounding how to. Um, create unity um, um, uh, and not sacrificing, you know, um, the kind of uh, revolutionary uh, uh, aims, um, but how to strengthen those aims through unity. Um, so um, the um, Many of, of the ideas here um, will be um, will find uh, kind of similar form formulations, you know, uh, some eighty years later um, in um, in Winston's text. Um, um, uh, which we are looking at here, just a part um, of his 1973 strategy for a black agenda. Um, um, but um, again, it's uh, a question of the uh, interlacing, the dialectical uh, unity um, of the political and the economic, um, uh, and how um, you know um, the uh, the political democratic uh, aspirations and goals, um, um, while uh, you know they might not bring about socialism immediately, um, are. Um, are 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 areas that um, further um, activity, education, agitation, and organization can be created uh, so as to move uh, closer to and create better conditions for you know achieving some of you know uh, uh, of the of the of the economic um, socialist uh, goals. Um, you know uh, um, uh, that 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 socialists you know are are attempting to bring about. Um, so 
Um, so Winston in this chapter kind of just begins by looking um, at, um, begins by looking at monopoly, kind of what monopoly looks like, uh, what it, it is doing internally um, and some of the conditions that set it um, kind of in motion. Um, uh, so it says, you know, US imperialism facing a world in which the forces of social and class and national liberation are on the ascendancy and in which foreign imperialist powers are challenging its domination, certainly can't do today what the slave power was and able to do over 100 years ago, solve its problems through aggression and expansion. Mon monopolists are equally unable to solve their problems at home, where they are not only imposing a wage freeze, but are also attempting to impose a far more repressive racist freeze on Black liberation struggles than that of the McCarthy period. By perpetuating and intensifying racism, monopoly aims to stop the advance of Black liberation movement, destroy organized labor, and suppress every struggle of the oppressed and exploited. Um, so this text, you know, is you know, written at a time when a lot of uh, national liber liberation struggles were in full uh, swing and creating uh, setbacks uh, for, uh, for U.S. imperialism. Um, um, and that, and that, um, that uh, kind of, uh, say, due to external constraints uh, and pressures from ascendant forces of socialism and national liberation globally, um, the imperial monopolist class must turn inwards to attempt to suppress the contradictions uh, it has given rise to. Um, racist and uh, economic warfare against working and people of color demanding equality become the way uh, by which an embattled empire whose boundaries and influences in influence are being contested everywhere attempts to solidify its position. Uh, and halts the internal contestations uh, of the unequal structures by which it has consolidated uh, its power. Um, so, um, you know, a kind of renewed uh, it, it, it kind of external expansion, you know, kind of contested. And so uh, a kind of uh, rebounding of the kind of internal assault um, uh, on wages, et, et cetera, um, and using racism um, uh, as one of the um, as one of the ways by which um, it can um, you know kind of maintain um, uh, uh, maintain the kind of level of of, of exploitation you know uh, uh, that you know capitalism uh, uh, necessitates um, in order to continue to be profitable etc. Um, so. Um, so monopoly uh, capitalism attempts to do uh, to the advancements made in the civil rights era uh, what the forces of reaction did to the advancements made in the period of reconstruction following the civil war, uh, a turning back of progressive forces through the courts and organized state and paramilitary violence. Um, um, so uh, Winston writes, monopoly capital within today's context aims to repeat the kind of assault on the people's rights that led to the betrayal of reconstruction. Um, so, uh, it, it, so, so the kind of turning back of the civil rights is he wants to kind of show as being kind of the same process that happened uh, in, in, in certain respects, uh, it's the kind of, a kind of repeat of the turning back of of reconstruction um, um, you know which has as much a racist uh, dimension as it does a kind of economic imperative um, of course you know in the doc in the democratization um, uh, uh, that was happening uh, uh, you know um, uh, democratization leads you know uh, to uh, more favorable economic conditions for the working class and uh, necessarily less favorable economic conditions for the exploiters. Um, so, you know, drawing here really the kind of intimate um, and an inherent relation 
um, between uh, racism and economic um, oppression. Um, so um, the rights, you know, of labor and that of black liberation have always been wedded together. Um, as during the betrayal of reconstruction, uh, white and black workers were divided to not only enforce racial domination, but make possible the general assault against labor and enforce the immiseration of the working class. So it is as well during the reaction to civil rights. Um, and so one of the aims of this, of this book, um, generally this chapter here um, is kind of um, forming a critique um, um, of some of the um, some of the new um, uh, movements, uh, um, not black nationalists and other um, separatist movements um, um, that were um, uh, cropping up and gaining more um, um, popularity, uh, particularly among uh, younger radicals. Um, um, so I, at the time, the kind of deepening economic crisis, particularly in Black America, leads some militants to become uh, you know, disillusioned uh, with the civil rights struggle, um, to kind of see the civil rights struggle as, um, as a position of compromise. Um, 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 and uh, as being not sufficiently radical of not bringing the revolution uh, 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 fast enough um, and uh, even of, um, of forestalling the possibility of a revolution through um, focusing on um, different political democratic considerations, um, various questions of equality and so on um, were kind of seen um, by various kind of thinkers and groups um, as, as um, kind of impeding um, revolutionary potential. Um, but Winston here um, is trying to push back on this, um, push back on this idea um, um, and kind of bringing to the forefront what Lenin as well was trying to uh, articulate um, surrounding, uh, concerning um, the great importance, actually, um, of political questions, of struggles for equality um, and democratization um, that, while not in itself bringing about revolution, creates the conditions for um, further advances made um, and uh, creating a terrain, you know, wherein uh, the greater uh, or the larger, the the uh, the, the the more far-reaching um, um, you know, social reconstructions of society can can take place. Um, um, so, you know, he says they did not realize that under capitalism, the most important fruit of struggle is the people's advance in unity and consciousness. In their frustration, they attacked the civil rights struggle itself instead of seeing that it had created a bridge uh, to the period ahead. Um, so this bridge, um, this deepening and, and broadening of the, de the, the democratic struggle, um, which King, uh, Martin Luther King remained faithful to until the very end, uh, was attacked from the left as something not worth salvaging because it didn't instantly produce the revolution the new militant left sought and attacked as well. And it was attacked as well from the right, um, but for uh, a different reason. Um, uh, Nixon uh, and company saw the danger it posed to the continuance of not just racial suprematism, but the economic system that this suprematism helped vouchsafe. So 
uh, Winston kind of pointing, pointing out here that the kind of ultra left and uh, the ultra right uh, were in fact kind of wedded um, to a very kind of, uh, to, to, to uh, the same object of critique, of course, for different reasons, but still um, um, want uh, uh, seeking to kind of jettison or or uh, or to um, or to uh, make suspect and make uh, an object um, of um, of, uh, of being something you know uh, an, an impediment, uh, of course, for different reasons, but still under seeing the civil rights struggle as a kind of impediment uh, and something um, you know uh, that needs to be attacked. Um, uh, so this kind of you know. Um, um, uh, this kind of interesting alliance in a certain way of the ultra left and the, uh, the, the ultra right, um, you know, um, for very different reasons, but still not seeing in the civil rights a broadening um, um, of the people's unity, um, practical um, and, you know, in terms of their consciousness, their theory, you know, people's theory, knowledge of what, uh, uh, of, of their, of themselves in the world, um, the civil rights, um, uh, you know, um, made possible in a way that no other um, struggle, um, that no other, you know, uh, uh, movement really had been able to do, um, um, you know, um, um, so, uh, Winston is wanting to salvage this tradition and point to it as as being as as Lenin pointed to uh, as the political struggle against autocracy as as a necessary uh, uh, intermediate but necessary uh, a step forward um, um, uh, that um, that uh, is you know. Um, a privileged place, you know, uh, where working people um, can um, can attain higher forms of unity. Um, and and so so you know, King would would progressively come to see um, the working class as the leader um, of democratic struggle. Um, which in the fight for civil rights brings to bear the leading position of the working class as such, which as a class in itself must also lead the economic struggle as the unity of black and white workers against their common oppressors. So Winston writes, although King's views were not identical with the Marxist conception of the role of the working class, not only as the main, but as the leader and the anti-monopoly struggle, it comes steadily closer to this outlook. Um, um, so, so Winston here is actually uh, placing King, um, uh, in fact, as being in a certain sense, a true representative of a Marxist-Leninist outlook um, uh, and form of struggle than the various uh, radicals that were uh, critiquing him. Um, um, uh, in that, you know, he, um, you know, brought to bear, you know, um, uh, and was able to unify in a way uh, that 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 none other was was able to do. Um, um, uh, uh, workers, both black and white, and uh, uh, create the kind of unity, you know, um, around uh, 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 these struggles that um, um, that the kind of separatist um, uh, radicals um, were not were not able to do, you know, um, um, uh, the young kind of radicals forgot the meaning. Of Lenin's words, um, which King adhered to uh, more closely than those who proclaimed for themselves the title of Marxist Leninists, um, 
uh, as Lenin wrote, all democracy consists in the proclamation and realization of rights which under capitalism are realizable only to a very small degree and only relatively, but without the proclamation of these rights, without a struggle to introduce them now immediately, without training the masses in the spirit of this struggle, socialism is impossible. Um, so, um, and, and uh, uh, Winston quotes as well, uh, another, another phrase of Lenin, uh, the more democratic the system of government, the clearer will the workers see that the root evil is capitalism, not lack of rights. Right, so, um, um, so again, this idea which, uh, Lenin wrote about at length, really, and which a lot of um, people who proclaim Marxism, Leninism, um, eschew in many ways, or just don't maybe know about uh, because they we don't read, um, you know, uh, the various things that 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 Lenin had to say about it. Um, but that you know, um, the struggle for partial freedoms, you know, uh, of uh, the various forms of equality. You know, which are important materially in themselves, you know, um, shouldn't be downplayed, you know, shouldn't be, you know, even if they don't bring about, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 full revolution tomorrow, they are uh, still materially in themselves important, but also uh, important as transitional moments to um, a greater um, and further reaching socialist revolution. So, um, so, so like King and the civil rights era, um, Frederick Douglass um, in the days of slavery developed what Marxist Leninists um, refer to later uh, as the anti-monopoly struggle, which means uniting all groups can be united for the aim of countering the hegemonic block of society, uh, be it chattel slavery, be it uh, chattel slavery capitalism or Jim Crow capitalism. In other words, a people's front that includes a diversity of groups united around a common goal. In this people's front, the most advanced revolutionary elements must hold together the various interests without succumbing to compromise that would affect the final aim of struggle. Immediate and intermediate tactical compromises may be permitted so long as those compromises do not render impossible the final aim and the strategic path to that end. That end must be not only the abolition of racism, but those conditions that give racism a material support. Uh, that is, you know, the conditions of capitalist commodity production, wage slavery, and the division of classes. Um, in other words, you know, as Lenin lays out um, in uh, the tasks of the, of, of the Russian Social Democrats, there must always be envisioned and set into practice the unity of the democratic and socialist struggles. Thus, the separatism of the new Black nationalists that Winston critiques cuts against not only the spirit of Lenin, but also of Frederick Douglass, who was among the first to formulate a notion of Black power that strengthens the position of Black people through the forms of unity made possible in collective struggle. Um, so Winston writes, you know, regarding Douglas, Douglas saw that all struggle, including that for self-organization was a process. It would be self-defeating, he realized, for black people to reject the strategy of coalition until some vague future date when they had achieved complete internal organization. Right, so, so again, you know, uh, socialism will not happen today or tomorrow, um, but 
through protracted struggle wherein the oppressed must at each opportunity strive to tip the balance of forces to gain for themselves alleviation from the various forms of oppression that beset them, even if these gains are partial, which they are destined to be insofar as capitalism continues to reign, as you know, as Lenin noted. Um, so, you know, Winston writes, you know, again, the majority of black as well as white masses are not ready to wait for socialism as the solution to their exploitation and oppression today. They continue to search for answers to the problems imposed by their common exploiter and oppressor state monopoly capitalism. So, um, um, we'll conclude here, you know, uh, with Winston kind of, you know, um, basically en ending by stating, you know, with, with, uh, with Dimitrov, you know, uh, uh, much later, um, that only through a united front struggle will the oppressed create the conditions for the final victory. Uh, separatism can only lead to dispersion, fracturing, and defeat. Um, you know, the united front means the struggle for democracy. It's broadening and deepening so that the final aims of socialism are made possible. Of course, as we have learned from Lenin, the struggle for democracy does not exist in a way abstracted from economic struggle. Rather, it is dialectically intertwined with it, a motive force of historical progress. Um, we must, following the examples of Lenin, Douglas, Robeson, and others, be able to see uh, the forest for the trees and make use of whatever forces are able to, to strengthen our own position, even if those forces do not align completely with our own. Because only in this way is the struggle for socialism made into mass struggle and not simply the project of an enlightened radical few. Um, so we'll stop there. Um, thank you very much.